Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, we are going to learn multiple linear regression or linear regression with multiple variables. And we are going to implement linear regression on a real world house price data set with 70 features. So the data set is huge, it's real world, and it has lots of features. So you are going to learn something valuable out of this video. So let's get started. <music> Okay, so we are on the screen and we will start by first importing our dependencies. I will import numpy and pandas and matplotlib. Numpy is used when we are dealing with the matrices. Pandas is used when we are dealing with the data and in machine learning, we are always dealing with the data. And matplotlib is used while we are dealing with the graphs. These three are one of the most important libraries when we are implementing machine learning in Python. So make sure you have a knowledge about that. I will also link down in the description below uh, where you can learn more about these uh, NumPy and Pandas. Uh, then we will uh, import our data set. So here we have our data set. Uh, I, have, I have divided the data set into two models two sorry modules one for training and one for testing let's see how our data set actually looks like so our data set have these many number these many features of the house and these two are the unwanted features we will remove that and at the end you can see we have a sales price sales price is basically our prediction price our y and all these are our x let's see how what this what does all these actually means so i have this file right here it has the description about every feature uh, this data set is a real data set so ms subclass is identifies the type of dwelling one one story newer all newer styles older styles etc ms zoning defines identifies the general zoning of the house uh, like agriculture, commercial, etc. You will also see one difference right here is that this data of Amazoning is in the form of a uh, string, but here we have in the form of number. So what actually I have done is I have already pre-processed the entire data set because the original data set had a lot of redundancies and a lot of unwanted data and unwanted features. I have removed all of them and I have done a very good amount of pre-processing. Also, I've converted the string data values into numeric. So for A, I have converted to zero, C is one, F is two, I is three, and so forth. So I've done all those heavy pre-processing so that now we can focus more on the machine learning part, okay. So let's move on. Now in the future videos, I'm also going to talk about how to do the data pre-processing and I'm also going to explain fully how I have pre-processed this data set which is downloaded from the Kaggle. But for that you will need to actually subscribe so that you can stay updated for my future videos. So hit the red subscribe button and also hit the bell icon to get notified. Also I'm going to provide a PDF notes which you can download from the description box which will contain the codes that we are going to implement along with the explanation of the code and you will also be able to download the data set that I am doing along with the description of the data set. And now we will uh, remove these two unwanted parameters, uh, sorry, unwanted features. So I've dropped off these two features and now let's uh, separate the X and the Y. So I have separated X and the Y for both training dataset and the testing dataset. Now let's have a quick overview of the linear regression. So if you do not know anything about linear regression, then click on the I button, uh, which will take you to another video where I have explained linear regression well. Uh, but if you do already know some about the linear regression, let's have a quick recap. We know that the linear regression, we predict uh, the predict the value of the y 
by this equation where x and xn minus 1 xn minus 2 and so on till x1 are the features uh, that we had before means these uh, and theta and theta n minus 1 and all the thetas are basically the parameters that we are going to train <clears throat> now if you see that uh, we can get this y prediction with the help of the matrix multiplication of x and theta uh, x and theta both are in the form of matrices uh, so basically we will get this equation with just matrix multiplication of x and theta but here we have x1 and here we have nothing so what we will do is we will multiply theta 0 with 1 so for that i'm going to add a column of ones before all the features uh, of the x so let me do that okay so i have okay so i have added the column of ones before the all the features for both training and the test data set now let's move on uh, we know that the cost function is the error representation and we find the error by subtracting the, our prediction value with the actual value and we take the square of it so that we get the absolute value or means the positive value and then we just uh, calculate the average of all those square errors and if you want to know about the cost function then click on the upper i button it will take you to the video where i have explained the cost function for linear regression in detail now to minimize the error we need to use something called gradient descent and the gradient descent uh, it basically works by reducing the cost value in such a way that it reaches its local minima and if you want to know about the gradient descent then click on the i button right now uh, which will take you to the video of the gradient descent where I have explained the gradient descent with as simple as possible and as much detail as it can go. Now this d theta is the derivative of the cost with respect to the theta. So basically when the when let's suppose if our cost is here then the d theta will be negative because the slope is negative so we are subtracting theta with a negative quantity means we are going to add some positive value to the theta so theta will increase and thus the cost will decrease and if, if we are at here then the slope will be positive and then we will be subtracting theta with the positive quantity so theta will decrease and our cost will also decrease and eventually we will reach our local minima so we will run all these equations for a certain number of times until we reach this local minima so one pass of this will reduce the cost value from here to here so we will repeat this for a certain number of times to get the to reach the local minima so let's make our linear regression model to do the same i'm taking four parameters x y learning rate which is alpha and iterations uh, iterations is basically how many times we want to run the loop then I will define M by size of the data set currently we have our data set size of the training as 1200 uh, we can uh, we can see the shape of the uh, data set let's let's check it out so our shape of the X train which is this training data set is 1200 comma 70 so we have 1200 houses and the data of the 1200 houses and each house, ha each house has 70 features and this is the price of every houses and and our test data set has 258 houses with same number of features and we are predicting the price of it and now let's continue making our model now i will define theta which is going to be first vector of zeros uh, so it will be a matrix of size n comma 1 so basically the theta is of the size 70 comma 1 now i will run a loop for iteration time and we are going to get our y pred so y prediction means the predicting value and we get that by just doing a matrix multiplication of x and theta now i will get our cost value or the cost function which is given by this formula so basically just this so I am taking the difference between prediction predicting value and the actual value doing it square and summing it and dividing it by 2m 
so we get our cost now let's get d theta which is given by this equation okay so that's it we got our model and we can just return the theta parameter and our job will be done but we can do something more here uh, to see if our model is actually training means if the cost is actually going down what we are going to do is we are going to get a cost list which is first going to be empty and we are going to append the cost value at every iteration to see if this is going downwards or not okay so i have appended the cost and we will also print this cost at uh, let's say we want to print only the cost by the 10 times so for doing so i can do this i can so this actually will print our cost for 10 times with this equation okay so our model is ready so now let's train this model i will define iteration to be let's say thousand times for now and learning rate for very small running rate i'm taking any learning rate let's say this one and calling our model also i just forgot to return the cost list so i'm returning the cost list and getting cost list here and our model is running and we can see that the cost value was 72 then it was steadily decreasing we can try increasing the learning rate and see what happens and it does not actually uh it, it is the model is not learning actually the cost value is going very high so what is happening here is that if we take a much larger uh, learning rate then instead of uh, uh, so it will subtract basically with a large large value and instead of taking this step it will take a bigger step which will take it here and it will just go up and up and up and up and it will never train so we will take our learn before learning rate you can take any learning rate you can experiment with your learning rate i'm also going to increase the number of iterations and we can see now with with time we can also add we can also train this for this model for longer but i think we have already reached reached our local minimum so i'm uh, just training it till now only now let's plot the graph between the cost and the iteration So we got our graph where you can see the cost function decreased and then almost remained steady. If you want to have a clear picture, then you can uh, actually decrease the number of iteration and you will see how, how smoothly the cost function is decreasing. But we want to have our model to be having better accuracy, so I'm increasing the number of iterations. Okay, so now fun part. Now we are going to test our model with our test data set and see what is the accuracy when we are testing the values. So let's do it. And finding for finding the accuracy, I'm going to calculate the error and then just subtract the error with one. And so we will get the accuracy of our model. So to get the error, what I'm going to use, do is just subtract the actual value with the predicting value and calculate its average. So it can be done by the following equation. So we can get the error by this equation by subtracting the actual value and the predicting value, taking the absolute value of the difference and doing just the average. So let's implement this in our Python code. So error will be error equal to one by M multiplied by np dot sum of an absolute value of y pred minus y test but we actually do not have y pred which is the predicting value so y pred we know is given by the matrix multiplication of x and theta uh, so here we will use x test and our trained parameter theta so we will get the error and let's get this Okay, so m is not here, m is equals to x test. So m is equal to basically x test shape zero, which is which is 258. 
we got our error. Let's print this. We can see we have got 12.95% error. So we can print it in nice form and also get print our accuracy. So we got our test error and the test accuracy. Accuracy we get basically by one minus error. So we have an error of 12.9%, 12.95% and we got the accuracy of 87 point almost 4%. 0.04% and this is actually we are training this model in a real-world data set with just few lines of code you can see we have just few lines of code we are able to predict the house of the price with 87% accuracy so this is the power of machine learning and with just a few lines of code we are able to get such a good accuracy and such a good results ha huh. And that was it. Make sure you download the PDF node so that you can implement this model by yourself and make sure to implement it by yourself so that you will retain whatever you have learned here in this video. And now if you want to know the difference between artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning and deep learning, then hit this button or hit this video and go to this video and check out where I have explained the difference. And I see you in the next video.